my name is Laura and this is my channel Laura's Little Library and welcome to today's video which is the mid-year freakout tag. And this tag was created by Mayona at, at her channel and I will link it down below so that you can check out the original and it is halfway through the year already and I am almost done with my my reading goal which is really really crazy so <laughs> yes I am filming this a little bit early so that I could be in front of my bookshelves because I am home over the summer so when this video goes up I will be back at home but still it's it's almost the middle of the year and I have read lots of books and I am now going to freak out about them. So the first question is what's your favorite book that you've read this year so far? And I of course can't choose one, so I have chosen two that are my favorites and I can't believe I read them this year. It feels like I read them so long ago. But also I've talked about them so much because they're my favorites, of course I'm going to talk about them. So the first is The Romance Book Club by Alyssa K. Adams. I really want to buy this book. I actually have read the entire Romance Book Club series, but the first one is my favorite of the series. I love that one so much. I think it is the best, as the best characters, best storyline, uh, best introduction. So I absolutely love that one and I will recommend it to anyone who likes romance even if they're kind of on edge about a lot of contemporary romance. Just I always say give this one a try. Then the other favorite book I read this year is For the Wolf and this is by Hannah Witten and this just hit me at the right time with the right stuff. It's got nature and blood magic and it's got sacrifice and sisters and the wolf. There is so much in this book. It is like a dark fantasy romance and it basically follows two sisters. One is to be sacrificed to the wolf, to the woods, to keep the uh, creatures from the woods out and not attacking the people in the cities. Um, and then the other daughter is for the throne, which is the second book in the duology, which is about to come out. It will have come out by the time this video goes up, um, but I'm excited to read that. So we follow the first sister that is sacrificed or the wolf in the woods. Anyway, so I very much love this book as well. So at the moment, those are kind of the top of the year. We'll see if anything surpasses them to be favorite of the year. Uh, the second one is what's the best sequel that you've read? And I would say the best sequel would probably be, and I'm talking just second book in a series, um, which I think for this question, you could do any book in the series, but I'm I'm going with the sequel and that is Legendary by Stephanie Garber. This is Caraval. This is the first book. It's the only one that I own, but the second book to the Caraval series is the best sequel that I've read. I almost like it more than I like this book, uh, honestly, which is a huge surprise because I almost always love the first book more. Like I pretty much always do, uh, but I loved Legendary so much and I love the first one as well but yeah if you haven't read this I would highly recommend it it's kind of a circusy magic kind of whimsical but like has darker themes to it uh, type series so uh, question number three a new release that you haven't read yet and I'm going with My Dearest Darkest by Kayla Cottingham as of filming I have not read this it is a dark academia and I really, really want to. I was so convinced that as soon as I bought it, which I bought it on the day it came out, I was going to read it. And I just haven't quite gotten around to it yet, but I know I will soon. Like, I am for sure going to read this before spooky season starts so that it can be in recommendation videos when spooky season is here. So, question number four is what is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year? And I do actually have a video of all the books that I'm looking forward to coming out in the second half of the year. I will link that up above as well as down below so that you can go and check that out if that seems interesting. I've got quite a few books that I'm really, really excited for in the second half of the year. Uh, one of them being The Dragon's Promise by Elizabeth Lim, which is the second book after Six Crimson Cranes in the duology. So read Six Crimson Cranes first. I am also really, really 
really looking forward to Wild is the Witch, which is Rachel Griffin's new book. It takes place in the same world as The Nature of Witches, but you don't have to read Nature of Witches in order to read Wild is the Witch. Completely different characters, different area, etc. and so forth. I'm also looking forward to A Very Merry Christmas by Lisa K. Adams. It's the fifth book in the romance book club series. So I'm also looking forward to that. And The Ballad of Never After, which is the next book by Stephanie Garber in her new duo duology that also takes place in the world that her trilogy, Carnival, takes place in. So there are lots of books that I'm looking forward to. I'm gonna move on now. <laughs> Question number five, what was the biggest disappointment? And I would say the biggest disappointment was Curse of the Spectre Queen by Jenny Elder Noak. I keep saying Noak, it's Moak. Not that this book is bad, but I hyped it up for myself so much. And it just didn't quite live up to my own hype, I would say. Um, so I was kind of disappointed at how flat this book fell. I thought the most interesting part of this book was shoved into like the last 30, 40 pages. And it was done really quickly and done kind of, I don't want to say lamely, but like it, it was it was not near as exciting. Whereas the beginning was long and slow and had such a build up. So... I just think that balance was kind of off, but I am going to read her next book, Rise of the Snake Queen, or the Snake Goddess, um, in hopes that the balance gets a little better. So not that it was a bad book, like I still recommend this book, but it was the biggest disappointment. Like I haven't had any other books that have really disappointed me. Question number six is what is the biggest surprise? And again, I'm gonna have to go with the romance book club for this one. Honestly, I thought it was just gonna be another like contemporary romance that I might like because the concept sounded fun but like it probably wasn't I thought it was gonna be a lot lighter and fluffier and like I thought it was gonna try and be cute but not actually be that cute when in reality it hit me so hard but it was also so cute like ah uh, just we dove so much deeper into so many more topics than I thought we were going to but still like in a contemporary romance uh I just loved it. I could relate to it. I loved the commentary of toxic masculinity and the ideas behind it. The characters were hilarious. So that was like definitely my biggest surprise in a positive way. Question number seven, who is your new favorite author? And I gotta say Trisha Levenseller. I I have been reading a couple of Trisha Levenseller's books and I've been loving them. Like The Shadows Between Us, I love that one. Blade of Secrets, I love that one. So I've started reading some of her books and I've been really enjoying them and I can't wait to continue reading more. I kind of put like all the rest of her books on my TBR and the second book to Blade of Secrets, Master of Iron is going to come out. So I've been very much getting into her books and loving them. Question number eight, do you have a new fictional crush? Yes, I do. Uh, the Wolf and for the Wolf. I have fallen very hard. to be in the woods with him. I very much do. So that's my new fictional crush. New favorite character. And this I'm gonna have to go with Izumi Tanaka. I probably said that wrong. I'm sorry. But Izumi is the main character of Tokyo Ever After. And the second book in the duology just came out, uh, Tokyo Dreaming. I thought she was just such a wonderful main character to read from. She wasn't perfect, but she had such a thick personality that came through in the narration and also just in the story that I just loved reading from her. And like she's a teenager, but like she she was just so fun and interesting to read from. So she's definitely one of my new favorite characters. Question number 10, a book that made you cry. I haven't like actually cried much for a book, but I came very close to crying in Luck of the Titanic because it's a Titanic story. So of course I came really close to crying the closest I have come this year to crying for a book, Luck of the Titanic. Um, question number 11, a book that made you happy. For that one, I'm going with Love Boat Reunion by Abigail Hingwen. I was so excited. I bought this the day it came out and I read it like the next week. <laughs> like I read this so quickly. I can remember, I think it was sitting down to read the book, either the session I finished it or the session before. And I was in such like a sad mood, like I wasn't very happy, I just wasn't feeling right, I was kind of depressed, a little anxious, just like couldn't quite figure out what it was, but I was not happy. And I started reading this book 
and by the end of it I was happy like it just it just made me happy I don't even know how to explain it so it's the second book after Love Boat Taipei which I recommend reading that one first because um, this follows the other characters from Love Boat Taipei and their romance but also their struggles to move forward in life and decide what they are going to do we've got uh, Asian woman in STEM representation. We've got another uh, kind of learning disability representation. He actually just cannot read. Yeah, so this book just actively made me happy. Question number 12, what's the most beautiful book you've bought this year? Um, Six Crimson Cranes. Yes. Look at this, it's shiny. I specifically bought the UK edition because it was significantly prettier than the US edition. I love the pastel colors, I love the cranes, I love the character, I love the little shimmeries. It's just gorgeous all the way around. So this is my most beautiful book of this year. And finally, question 13, what are, what are some books you still need to read? I've got quite a few books that I still need to read, obviously. It's a fact of life, it will never change. This is my notebook, it has all my notes on it. Um, <laughs> so some of the ones that I really want to read, I've got some Dark Academia that I want to read, like I said. My Dearest Darkest, also The New Girl by Jesse Q. Sutanto, Dial A for Aunties, also by Jesse Q. Sutanto, and then I've got like Within These Wicked Walls, and Witches Steep in Gold, A Master of Gin, The Witch's Heart, like I really want to read more mythology, so I've just got so many books, both backlisted and new, that I really want to read. Anyway, that is it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you are new here, feel free to click the subscribe button. I make videos on Sundays and Wednesdays. And while you're down there, you can go ahead and leave me a comment, either answer any of these questions. If you are also a fellow booktuber, go ahead and consider yourself tagged. I'm not tagging anybody specifically. It's just kind of a generic open. Go ahead and do it if you need an excuse to. Uh, this is your excuse. <laughs> Otherwise, I also have bookish social media down below that you can follow me on and just keep track of what I am reading. But until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.